and we are recording. So hello everyone, uh, this is Kyle and this is a reply to for the cultural self inventory. Um, first off, yeah, I think this is a, a wonderful topic to talk about and super grateful I get to do a cultural self inventory. I've never done one, so excited to give it a try. Um, I've been listening to a few of the of the inventory so far and, and really have connected with a lot of them. So thank you all for sharing. Um, a little bit about me, I, I was born in Canada. I grew up in the Midwest, mostly Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then I moved back to Canada after university. And then I made my way to Japan for a bit, ended up in Hawaii for a few years, and now I'm back in Japan with a little bit of a stopover in the, in the Midwest again. So <clears throat> as far as where I'm from, it's a, it's a question I ask myself a lot, but well, I'll, I'll go with Minnesota for now. Um, I feel that's where my family is and where my roots are. Um, but the, the community I wanted to talk about for this inventory is a community I connected with in Hawaii. Um, through, the through the University of Hawaii, they have a Japanese language program, an outreach program for people who want to continue their Japanese language studies. So after I was in Japan the first time, I, I connected with this community. And um, in, in that group, there's a, there's a lot of second, third, fourth generation uh, local Japanese and other people that maybe have lived in Japan that want to continue their studies or, or learn or learn there or learn uh, Japanese um, kind of from scratch and different levels. Um, and I think the reason why I want to talk about this community is we, we just had a, a, a meeting today online of just a, a bunch of different people from the group and we just kind of got together and just reached out and talked about how we're all adapting to our, our new realities. Um, but anyway, some characteristics of this group is that all in this community speak Japanese to some capacity, whether it be native speakers, high level, um, second, I don't know, uh, L2 speakers. Um, maybe some of them have lived in Japan or are aspiring to live in Japan. And uh, an asset of this group is that our common experiences have given us give us endless topics to discuss, whether it be directly about Japanese culture, Hawaii Japan relations, local Japanese culture in Hawaii, uh, sports, food, teaching, the list goes on and on. And most in the group do have experience either living abroad, uh, dealing with acculturation, learning another language, struggling with communication in that new language. And it's, it's a very supportive group of people wanting to come together and learn language, and we also did language exchanges with Japanese and English. So it was just a very supportive, all-around, you know, good group of, of people. Um, but the, the barrier for me, and I don't know if other people felt this in this group as well, but at times, I'm not from Hawaii, nor am I, Jap nor am I from Japan or Japanese, and I often feel like an outsider in this group. And it has taken me a long time to give myself permission to feel accepted in a group like this. Um, I also don't have a, I didn't have a really solid grasp of the local dialect in Hawaii, so a lot of times I felt a bit isolated when, when we weren't speaking Japanese and local people there would kind of go into their local dialect and wouldn't, wouldn't, wasn't sure which words to use. And it was kind of, a, of an, an identity crisis. I was like, one second I'm speaking Japanese and the next I'm switching into this new register of English. and. So I think that was my, my, my big barrier, was more of an identity thing. And I know this barrier has followed me to other communities I'm involved with, especially now back in Japan. Um, I've joined a running group. And it's a, it's a challenge to push myself to show up in that group because it's, it's a barrier of how do I get into that? How do I get into that mode of it's Japanese mode? You know when I'm running with them, and it's been great, but it's just hot. it's just overcoming that hump every time, and and I'm not sure if that has to do with appearance, language ability, or is it or if it's something deeper. Um, but again, this this inventory has allowed me to see that in a whole new light, and I think and to start to think of new ways to overcome this barrier, and it also made me think on the flip side how this affects my learners as far as you know language and identity. And if they were, you know, to go abroad and how, how are they going to acculturate and what are some, maybe some tips or suggestions or advice I can 
kind of offer to, for, for that success to happen. Um, so again, it's really made me think about that and then uh, thank everyone for sharing their experiences. Um, a lot of great connections and, and really, really cool topic to discuss. All right, have a great day, everybody.